Hello and good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm thankful to be here with you. And I'm thankful to work with teams who are passionate about combining the best of open source with the best of cloud infrastructure. I'm here today because I want to talk about what we see at Google Cloud and on our open source data team as the future of open source data processing. For the past couple of years, we've been working on cloud data proc. Data proc is our managed Spark and Hadoop distribution. We run it as a service to offer the very popular Apache and Friends, things like Presto components, so people can use them without having to be an expert on infrastructure or know how to tune open source. We've gotten really positive feedback. Data proc is used by a wide variety of people. It's used by data developers, by data scientists, business analysts. So it works quite well. But the way that these managed Spark and Hadoop offerings are classically constructed have a set of problems which are getting compounded as people think about hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. So we thought to ourselves, how do we start solving some of these problems? And a lot of it boils down to yarn. And I'll give you a few concrete examples. Say you have some PySpark, and you run that PySpark in Dataproc, and then you want to go run it on Amazon EMR. It's probably not going to run the same. You have operating system differences, Python library differences, the environments are tuned differently. Something that should be very portable and easy to move is actually really immobile. Additionally, we see customers who want to maximize their cloud spend, which makes complete sense. If they're running 100 CPUs in a project, they want to use those 100 CPUs to do data analytics to serve some of their stack. They don't want to spend more than they have to. And we want to enable them to make the most of their resources. So we think that Kubernetes is a way that we can help solve this problem. And obviously, Google, if uh, you're unaware, is very much behind Kubernetes. We seeded it, and we're still the largest contributor. And Kubernetes offers a chance for open source to run more cleanly and efficiently in what we see as the next generation of managed open source services. Earlier this year, we released our Spark, Spark operator for Kubernetes. Uh, this was so we could get experience on how these open source components work on Kubernetes. And it was also to make a meaningful contribution back to the open source community so people could start experimenting in what we saw would be the future. Two weeks ago, we were really excited to announce that Cloud Data Proc has now been modified to run both Yarn and Kubernetes clusters. We started with Spark because we see a lot of our new development occurring in Spark, so it made sense to start there. But our goal is to offer the individual open source components running on Kubernetes clusters and managed by our unified control plane, in this case, Cloud Data Proc. But it doesn't stop there. As part of that announcement, we also released our Flink operator. These are the first two of many, but we're actively involved in trying to make open source a better place. We don't want to just let the open source community do things for us or pay someone else hoping that things get done. We need to be actively involved. If I were you, I would be asking myself, what does this mean for me? What's the value in it? So there's a few key points. Let's go back to that PySpark that you want to run in multiple places. In a Kubernetes world, it's going to be much easier to take that PySpark code and all of the things that it requires and move it between clouds. And that's a good thing. The goal is not to lock you in and make life difficult. Second, you want, you want better component isolation. So if you're using something like Spark, you don't necessarily care about Pig and Hive and Uzi and all of these other things. You just want to use that one component. And we want to make that happen for you. Third, we want to offer a platform on Cloud Data Proc and Google Cloud for the open source vendors who specialize in components. And you see it happening with things like Presto and Druid. We want to offer a platform where vendors can make money, and they don't have to focus on cluster management and trying to do things like security and logging. And fourth, we see that Kubernetes is moving a lot faster than Yarn in the Yarn-based world. And we want to expose a lot of the primitives, like auto-scaling and cluster healing in Kubernetes to the open source components. What it means for Cloud Data Proc as a service is that it, we want it to be that unified control plane that offers management, security, logging, and monitoring across both Yarn and Kubernetes clusters. The nice thing is, is a lot of this work is also directly usable and beneficial to the open source community. So what we've done with Spark and Flink, if you want to go run on AWS or Azure, you can do that. And that's how open source should work. And we're very passionate about that. So the next thing that I want to do is walk you through a few demos here. Specifically, what I want to start with is how things work on Yarn today, so you can get a sense for uh, how, how the world exists as it's structured today. What you see here is a cluster. It's a Yarn-based cluster in Cloud Data Proc. We're opening a notebook. And in this notebook, uh, we're going to create a really awesome data science model. And uh, really, what we're doing is we're going to calculate pi. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and run this model. And this is a pre-recorded demo. I will give you information how you can see this live at our booth. I wanted to focus on you and not a computer here up on stage. So this is, this is pre-recorded here. Uh, we ran the model, and we see that pi is 3.14, which is great. It checks out. As a data scientist now, I think to myself, this notebook is good. I got the results I expected. I want to go ahead and run it in production. So the next thing I'm going to do is save it into a cloud storage bucket. And this will allow me to reuse this model and submit it as a job on my clusters time and again, so I don't have to open up my notebook and try running it each time. Uh, I could also do things like script out uh, my notebook and run it at a particular point in time. And you can see this is actually a real demo that we recorded. There was a, a, a typo there, so it's not uh, totally, totally fake here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do in Cloud Data Proc is run this notebook as a job. So in Cloud Data Proc, we have an API that has three primitives, clusters, jobs, and workflows. So you can create and manage clusters, you can create and manage jobs, and you can create and manage workflows that are essentially a cluster definition and a set of jobs. So you don't have to think about how long clusters live and managing clusters and all of that. In this case, we're going to go ahead and run a PySpark job on a cluster. And this is this PySpark job. We fed it the cloud storage bucket location. So basically, we're running this uh, PySpark I created in my notebook as a job against a cluster. Uh, one of the neat things that we've done with Cloud Data Proc is as we get driver output, we spool it through our API. So in this case, we're using the web UI. Uh, and you're going to see the driver output stream directly. And this is to avoid you having to do things like SSH into a cluster. You just saw the command prompt or uh, the G Cloud Cloud SDK uh, hint come up. You could also do this through a terminal if you were so inclined. And you can see here that we have calculated that pi is 3.14. Well, let's think about this in the Kubernetes world. Instead of starting with a Yarn based cluster, I'm going to go to my Kubernetes, en Kubernetes engine clusters uh, on Google Cloud Platform. Uh, I have a cluster here called my cool web apps. And what's neat about this cluster is I've gotten all of my networking settings. I'm running other stuff on it. So I'm already utilizing this cluster. You can see here the Helm install for the components which allow this cluster to plug into the Cloud Data Proc API. And what we're doing now is listing all of the clusters that Data Proc knows about. And what's really cool is you can actually see that we now can show both the Yarn clusters and the Kubernetes clusters together. So you don't get this disjointed view of the world. This is really important because as people move from Yarn to Kubernetes, you don't have to think and rationalize about one or the other. Additionally, the container for our Kubernetes world matches our Yarn-based image. So you don't have to think about how you juggle between the two. In this case, we're going to use that same jobs API that I mentioned previously and that we saw to submit this job to the Kubernetes cluster. You can see that I've specified uh, the particular container that I want to use. And we're going to also specify the notebook that I want to run on this Kubernetes cluster. You, again, see the output, so you don't have to think about opening SSH windows and juggling complicated networking settings. You're just getting the raw output of the job uh, as it runs right now. In the future, in the web UI, you'll actually just see something as simple as a, a toggle box between running something on a Yarn cluster or a Kubernetes cluster. And again, this is to make transition and, and migration between these two worlds as seamless as possible. A lot of things that work and run today, you might not want to just instantly move to Kubernetes. And that's completely, completely fine. In this example, you see that there's a job ID. And that was assigned by the data proc service. To show you how these are integrated and how we've made Spark play well with Kubernetes, we can go into the Kubernetes engine uh, workloads and actually look up the logs based on that data proc job ID. So again, you're not having to think and rationalize about, I have this thing in service A, I have this thing in service B. How do I match them? It's all seamlessly integrated together. And in this case, we've loaded the Spark driver output directly from Kubernetes engine. And we can see that pi is 3.14. And that is an example of the fact that we've taken the due diligence and the work to cleanly integrate Spark and Kubernetes. Uh, this is really complicated because this is the clean way to do it. We're making a clean break. But we see this as the right way to do things going into the future. It's not just you know, as simple as putting yarn on Kubernetes. That doesn't set people up for success in the future. We have a booth. Uh, we also have engineers from the data proc team. 
If you want to see this running on GCP, please stop by our booth. We can also coincidentally show it, you uh, this running on other clouds as well, uh, which is obviously part of our long-term uh, future and what most customers want. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>